Hello everyone, I am Kat and I want to welcome you to Kat's Creations Reese or Kat's Creations and more. However you know um, me out on social media or by watching Facebook lives, I want to welcome you to my design studio where today I'm going to walk you through how to make an Americana angel uh, where you could use it as a wreath attachment, you could use it as a graveside memorial, you could use it as a way of keeping somebody close to you that you need to constantly, you know, stay in prayer for. Or for people who have everyday seasonal trees, this is the amazing way to top off your everyday trees. So walking you through this technique, you're going to be able to adapt this and change this for any holiday or theme that you might have. Um, so if you want to save this tutorial, you're going to want to do two things. So if you are on Facebook right now with me live, you're going to want to make sure that you're following my page, but also you're going to want to click the three little dots to the right. It'll open up a sub menu and you'll also want to make sure that you turn live notifications on or make sure that you've liked the page. Then this way, when we go live, and you happen to be on your device, you'll be notified like you are on all your other notifications um, that we're going live. So you can go ahead and just click on that notification and join me live. YouTube subscribers, a little bit different. You're just going to simply um, make sure that you've subscribed to my channel. And that way, whenever we have a new tutorial um, uploading, you'll get notified that way. Also, if you want to save this tutorial like i said facebook users uh, all you have to do is click the share button takes the tutorial from this page and puts it on your facebook page youtube subscribers you're just going to click the share button and if you have folders set up you can go ahead and stick that in whatever folder um, that is handy or makes sense to you also um we have a new announcement coming so that's going to be in my newsletter coming sunday so it'll come out on Sunday. If you have not signed up on my email list, um, you're going to want to do that so that you get that update. That's where I'm going to host it first is email subscribers. And then um, it'll kind of tell you what's coming here really, really soon. So I can't wait to share that. You're going to want to go to castcreationsdemore.com. I think it's like the second option down allows you to sign up for the email newsletter and then you'll be in the know. Also, um, let me go ahead and get everything pinned for you guys so that I can see your comments. And I'm trying to be a little bit more diligent. I've noticed as I've gone back in and I'm editing YouTube videos, I'm like, I have a tendency of working off the mat instead of on the mat. Um, so if you guys can help keep me honest there and just let me know, hey, you're off the mat. Uh, we can't see. Um, that will definitely help me there. Okay. So let me go ahead and type this in for you all. And then we'll go over the materials. We'll do the prep part and then we'll put it all together. Let me get to the period and dot com. Up. Oh, pin this together. Okay. Anytime you want to pin. Sometimes your tablets get a little bit sensitive. So welcome to all of you that are joining me and coming in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down so you can see what I am doing. So just bear with me one minute. And I think that'll work because I'm trying to include this area, which is where I have a tendency of working. So putting together an angel tree topper, you're going to need this just makes it easier. You're going to need something to hold all your pieces in. So for me, the Bodabra is instrumental in that regard. Plus, it's also my bow maker. So we're going to use the Bodabra. You're going to need, depending upon what color angel you want to make, you're going to need 10 inch pieces of mesh. Now I'm using a red and tan because we're going Americana. And I'm also using a navy and tad. Navy and tad. Navy and tan burlap plaid wreath um, or deco mesh. This is from Hobby Lobby. Uh, this piece here is from Craft Outlet. You need to cut them 10 inch pieces. So because we're alternating the pieces, I need six red 
and then six blue. Grand total of 12 deco mesh pieces cut to 10 inches. Then you're going to need an inch and a half wooden ball. You can pick this up at Hobby Lobby while you're picking up the navy and tan plaid uh, burlap mesh. These will be found way in the back where their craft section is. This is going to be the head for our angel because we're going more rustic, more Americana. You will also need three different color pipe cleaners. So obviously we're doing the navy, we're doing the red and the tan. This is going to make our halo. You will also need three inch and a half pieces of ribbon cut to four inches. So these are all prepped and ready for us. In addition, you need something that you want to make your bow with. I'm gonna go with this more rustic looking, um, I think this is five eighths inch ribbon. This came from Michaels. It does not have to be wired. This is gonna create the bow. And then you'll need a couple extra pipe cleaners to put everything all together to create your hanger. And you'll see where we're gonna integrate the rest. So, making sure. All right, we're all set. What we're gonna do is prep. Oh, also I forgot this. It is a half inch bell, or you can use a star or whatever you want to be the embellishment in the center of your bow. Um, I'm doing mine with a bell because, I don't know, that's what I've done with most of the angels. Unless they're specific holiday themed or just themed in general. Like if I'm doing a dog uh, angel, I might include like a little dog head or a ball or a dog bone. Just something to kind of set that apart. So we're using the red bell. These are at Hobby Lobby as well. So you can pick that up with the wooden ball and with the navy and tan plaid burlap mesh. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to twist together my halo. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners, just like this. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna twist them together, just like that. And then I have a tendency of holding the outside too. And as I'm twisting this around, I wanna make sure I can see all the colors. So like right now I'm starting to not see the blue. So I'm gonna separate these a little bit more. And we'll stretch those out as we twist so that we can see blue. And I'm just twisting these two around the blue one, making sure that they don't twist on themselves. And you can go as tight as you want, as wide as you want. I just try to get a semblance of all the colors. I try to be as equal as I can. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily work out, but you can try. Okay, I'm making sure we get that tan in there a little bit more. And you're just gonna run that all the way to the end. So this is our halo. Now we are going to just simply, I'm prepping this so that the assembly portion is easy. We're gonna go just around the circumference of our ball and I'm going to crisscross these right. I'm just holding it. I'm going to pop my ball back out. And I want to close it just a touch. And then I'm going to twist these together. Just like this. And then what we are going to do is our halo is going to float above the head so that it sits kind of like this. So in order to make that happen, we need to get the end part, which is right in here, to kind of go around the head so that when we go to glue it, it's gonna mold around the head, just like that. And then this part is gonna stay along the back of our angel. So we just need to, it's so much easier to do it now. And then when we get ready, this is just gonna go straight down along our angel. So if you need to, go ahead. It, I used to tease my husband. It reminds me of like the Star Trek, sh the Starship Enterprise or something like that. It's got a little swoop. And then this is going to go along the back. Okay. With that, we are going to dovetail our inch and a half ribbon pieces, which is bring your wired edges together. We are going to cut from 
the folded side to the wired end, just like so. You could stack them and do them all together. I have a tendency sometimes that they slide a bit. So you don't want to go too deep on your V's as well. We're going to be using 26. This one's actually 30. I think we should be able to get away with this. Let me look. Usually I prefer to use 26 gauge. Let me find it. So 26 gauge should be that is uh, for me it's about nine inches what you're going to do is you're going to overlap your ribbon pieces make sure they're all facing the same direction it's kind of handy to have that ready to go we are just going to gather at the top just like so. Zoom in. I think that's pretty close. We're zooming in and then we are going to take, I have a feeling it's like it's starting to slip. Um, you're just going to take your wire and twist that around to kind of hold those three pieces together. And you can bring that back out to the front if you want. Bring that around and then twist it again a couple times. We'll cut off the excess. We will fold this up. And then we can fluff this out. I try to make sure that the legs of each kind of go in between. So this is her bib that's going to go around the top. You can clean up the top if you kind of don't really have it quite squared. Sometimes that happens when you're going and pushing them all together. Okay, oops, there's that piece. Now we are going to, I'm gonna pull off a little bit bigger piece. Just cause when you're working with miniatures, it's easy to have more than enough wire than not enough. This will be the last piece that we have. Now, we're going to use this 5 8 inch ribbon. I'm going to dovetail the end. This one is not wired. Okay, this will probably be the most challenging part for you. So what you're going to do is measure out approximately like 3 inches you're going to gather in, you're going to create a loop. You need to keep everything small and then twist, create another loop, twist, and then you're just going to draw that in down. Would this work easier with wired ribbon? Yes, but I have yet to find this like burlap ribbon in a um, wired ribbon look. So now we're just going to twist and keep these secured. I will cut off the excess right here. I'm just gonna fold that part flat and then we're gonna re-fluff out our bow here a bit. And you can decide which way you want it to go. It's entirely up to you, but we do need to dovetail this end. You could go with red. You could go with tan. You can go with blue. You can go with a combination of the two. I'm trying to get that one to fold flat. I can still do it this way which is just fine. So this is actually going to sit right here on top. And this is the bow that we've made for the bib of the ribbon. Oop, I keep doing that. 
trying to figure out mm. there we go so that's what you're going to need so that you have this part that's going to cover up some of the mechanics we have our bow we have our bell that's going to get put in the center so now that we've got those pieces all assembled we are now ready to assemble our angel okay let's go ahead and zoom out this is how you're going to create your wings and your skirt so mine's going to alternate red tan and blue so it'll be like red and tan then tan and blue so you decide it's up to you whatever piece you start with will be the piece that's on the inside part of her skirt and then the red will be on the outside I think I want to go with the red on the inside so that the blue will be on the outside we are going to I'm going to use some things that are weighted to help the pieces you'll start to see when they stack up um, they don't like to stay so here's our finished edge you have to use a rotary cutter on the burlap because this burlap fiber will not cut with a wood burning tool it will simply just sit there and smoke it'll go through the polypropylene part okay but every single time you hit that natural fiber it's not going to cut anymore so just rotary cut this so we have finished edge on the top and bottom we are going to go from the corner we're going to go about halfway in okay and then you're going to stretch your burlap, your mesh. Then you're gonna go all the way up to this side, stretch. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna fold the top to the middle, fold the bottom up so that we have those meeting in the middle. We are just going to fold those and those are going to go right in our bodabra, just like this, sideways not face up or face down sideways and this is where i said sometimes you just need to have something here to hold it a lot of times what i'll do is just chip clip the ends so they stay nice and flat where did my other chip clip go i think it fell in my bucket which is no worries we'll go ahead and use this one we will use clothespin so right now it's staying flat. Now we're gonna take the navy blue. Same thing, finished edge on the top, turn it diagonally, go about halfway, stretch, bring the bottom up, still stretched out, top to the middle, bottom fold to the middle. Then we're going to pull those up. We want the open ends facing me, lay that again back inside our bodabra. I'm going to go ahead and chip clip that side. And I'll go ahead and do this one. And you can see that I want them to stay flat, to stay flush. You can use whatever you want to create some weight there till you get your next piece in. Hi, Shirley. Welcome. Hi, Teresa. She said, I love your angel design. I made a blue and white one for my great grandson's baptism. Nice. I'm going to make an army one for my granddaughter to take with her on training if I could find the right color. You should. Moss green is, uh, I think Hobby Lobby has like an army green and tan. So that would be a bonus for you. Lori, good afternoon from Delaware. Thanks for watching. Okay, back here. We're going top to the middle, stretch. Bring this one up to the top, stretch. Then you're gonna fold down halfway, fold up to the halfway, and then you're gonna fold up. Lay that back on the inside. I'm just chip clipping those down. Now we're gonna do our blue. So we're going to do this for the first six, alternating our colors. The stretching part is handy 
because it elongates your wings. Otherwise, you have short, stubby wings. Here we go up. Laying that right back in the inside. There's that one. And we'll do this. See, now it starts to get easy when I can just put the whole thing in there. Now we have our red to the center. Stretch to the center. Stretch. Bring it down to the middle. Bring it up to the middle so that you have equal parts on both sides. Squish. I'm going to lift this up so I can get my piece in. I'm going to try to make sure that I keep them fairly even if I can. Shape clip. There's that one. And then we have our blue. So to the middle, stretch. To the middle, stretch. Fold to the middle. Fold to the middle. Grab it in the center. Lay that right down. And we're going to plop that inside. There's my chip clip. And there's my chip clip. Okay. Now, we have been folding them so that the open ends have been facing me. Now, with the next six, we're going to flip them over so they face the opposite side. This is the big difference most people don't do. They do everything, all 12 pieces, the exact same way. This is where it will set yours apart. And there's a reason and a logic behind that. So, fold remains exactly the same. To the center, stretch, bring it up. Fold, fold. We're going to fold again. And remember we were doing them this way. Now we are going to do them this way. So there are, the open ends right here are facing the opposite direction. So I'm just going to lay those inside. Come in here with this. Again, my chip clips just help hold the pieces flat. So here to the middle stretch, bring it up, top down, bottom up, grab the middles, and then we're turning them this way. Now, depending on your deco mesh, it might be like one, like the poly burlap, or not poly burlap, but this burlap mesh is going to be thicker than if this was just done with regular deco mesh. It's going to feel thicker, like the center is going to be thicker because it is a thicker mesh. Okay, stretch, bring it up, stretch it out, or fold, fold up, fold again, lay this on the inside. Shape clip, shape clip. These are just adding weight so that I'm trying to keep that center compressed. That is key in how well it all goes together and how it's going to look in the end. Okay, let's zoom in so you guys can really see this one. Okay, so just like this, finished edge, top, Turn it to the side. We're going to bring the top to the middle. Stretch. Bring this up to meet. Make sure you're stretched. We've got tension on that. We're bringing the middle piece down to the middle. Up to the middle. Fold. And we're turning. Then, this is going right on the inside. 
with my Bodabra. I am going to chip clip. Chip clip. Put this back in. I have two more pieces to go. So to the middle, stretch. Bring the bottom up. Keep tension on that so you keep those wings. See, like, if I don't do it, if I just fold it and I don't stretch it, these wings stay at about uh, 19 inches. But if we stretch them, oops, eh, we got about another inch out of it. So tension to the middle, to the middle, fold. Go ahead and lay that right on the inside. You can adjust your chip clip. My chip clip. Compressed. That is probably the hardest thing, is trying to keep that pretty well compressed. When Steve and I did this initially, he would just hold all the pieces for me. I would just form all the pieces and then just hand them to him. So he would just keep everything tightly compressed. Here's the other piece. This is our final piece. So we're going to put this in the center. I'm still doing my chip clip. Still doing this. Still gonna weight this so I can prep the next step, which is now we're gonna assemble it. So I think I'm going to start with a beige pipe cleaner. And um, right now, the top six went towards you. So when I go to lay them down, I'm gonna pick up that whole stack just like this. I'm gonna flip it, pivot it down, and make sure that my pipe cleaner winds up right in the center. So, move my chip clips. This is the tricky part. Compress that stack, but don't let them unstack. So keep that nice and tight. We're gonna pull our pipe cleaner up, our pipe cleaner up, and we're going to keep those tight and we're gonna twist. Now the one thing you don't want it to do is you don't want your stack to roll down like a concave C or roll up. You want it to stay flat. Just like you had them in there, you need it to stay flat. Now we're just going to twist our pipe cleaner all the way up, just like so. Just like that. Ta-da! It's all done. No, just kidding. Okay, so when I go to flip this over, this is the back. Then when I flip this over, these are now the front. The ones that are open on top are the wings. The ones that are folded away from us is the skirt. So from here, we're going to separate the skirt from the wings. So what we want to do is number one, if they're not straight, you have an opportunity right here to straighten these out. I'm trying to get this one just an ever slight drop. So I'm grabbing the two red. It's easier if I turn them this way. Then I'm going to pull the blues down. Then I'm going to pull the red down. Then I'm going to pull the blue. So you fold it in half, you get extra coverage. Then we're going to pull the red down. And then we're pulling our blue down. This is the last piece, our blue. So if you need to adjust any of your pieces, make sure you do that now. Again, this is sticking to my sweater. I want to keep all my colors nice and separated, but I also want to give her a, um, a uh, 
thin waste if I can. So see how I'm just rearranging my pieces so that they all are equal. So I'm gonna keep that really super tight. And you can choose at this point if you wanna still stay beige, you can do beige, you can do red, um, you can even do the blue. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm gonna keep mine with beige right now. So I want her waist to be no more than two inches from the top all the way to where I'm putting my pipe cleaner. But I also want to keep it really compressed because I want a fairly thin angel. So I'm just going to pull these up and make sure I have equal sides. Again, don't let them roll up on you. Keep them all flat. You just need them tight enough so that you can go ahead and do this part without them rolling. So see, like right here, I'm gonna zoom in really, really tight so you can see this. Everything is stacked. Nothing is rolled up on itself. We're gonna go ahead and run this out all the way to the end. Don't worry about any frays you see right now because it's easier to wait until the end, you know, to address them. I'll get that one out of the way so it does not combine. So right here, we're gonna join the two together. But before we do that, we're gonna make sure that our angel wings are even. So I'm gonna flip this upside down because this is your one final opportunity that if your wings are not even, you know, wingtips and wingtips are the same, you can make a slight adjustment here on your wings to make sure that they're all even. And sometimes it's really apparent, like you can totally see, hey, one's a little bit longer than the other. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way those look. So now you can see the open ends form the wings. The wings have openings, so they create that really pretty little S shape in the wings. And the bottom of her skirt, now because we did opposites, remember we folded them so that the openings are on the back, it creates a really nice look in the front. It's smooth. So flipping these over, we are going to take the top and we're just going to twist it to the bottom. So we're gonna twist these two together all the way down to where this meets her waist part. And then I'm just going to trim this off. Your top part of your wings, you're just going to drag that in this way if they wanna hang it on a tree they can take this and wrap it around the top of your everyday tree or your Christmas tree. You could also take this and turn it into a little U shape. If you just want to hang this on the wall, that's an option you have, but you have to add in hanger. It's easier to do it before than after because sometimes when you try to do it afterwards, um, you can't get your pipe cleaner in there. So now here, we're gonna run a bead of glue all the way down the center, right along our center pipe cleaner, just like so. And we are going, I'm using my needle nose pliers to hold that in place until the glue sets up and dries. So I have mine on high right now. I need to turn it to low because it doesn't need to be on high but we're just gluing this. So what this does reinforces everything that you've assembled at this point. It's also helping now to hide the mechanics of how this was created and built. So you just wanna hold this in place until it all glues nice and flush. And so take your time when you're assembling these because if you're in a hurry just to finish them, it's gonna show in your finished quality pro or finished product, I should say, 
So you could also use a silicone fingertip and hold that, but right now my glue is dry. We're all set up. And now we're ready to take these pieces that we have over here and we're ready to assemble our angel. Do you guys have any questions on the back part? You're welcome, Lourdes. She said, thank you for showing us. Hi, Vivian, watching from Washington. Nice, a fellow Washing Washingtonian, however you say that. Oops, I want to grab my scissors and the handles were in between my glue gun. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of all my chip clips and my ribbon because I don't need those. Now we're going to flip this over. This is now the front of your angel tree topper. So this is what you generally don't see when you're looking at that. So you wanna make sure that your body is straight. And then right here is where we're gonna glue on our wooden head. So you might wanna look at it and make sure you have one that's really pretty. Sometimes the way that the balls have been sanded down and formed. A lot of times they have like a little oval, which is great. And I don't put faces on my angels. If the client wants to put a face on their angel, that's great, um, but I do not. So as you can see, it's kind of got this little round look. So I'm gonna go with that on my angel. So with that, I need to place some glue and I'm going to go pretty generous here and I'm going to take this part and I'm going to place it right in between my wings and I am pushing uh, against each other. I'm pushing the body of the angel to the right and I'm pushing the head on to the left until these dry. And I'm keeping it elevated off of my mat because I don't want my head um, being flush on the backside. I want it to kind of be in the middle. And I'm waiting for that clear, hot glue to turn cloudy because that will tell me that it is dry and set up. So this glue, the glue is now having an opportunity to penetrate through those deco mesh burlap layers, again, solidifying the strength of your angel. You can blow on it because we need cold in order to um, to get that to set up. But if you're just patient in this portion when it comes to assembling it, then you'll turn out a really great product that you'll be super happy with. And so this year I'm trying to figure out a variation to do them and I think um, I might show you guys how to do the supersized angels, but they're almost too big to ship um, using 21 inch deco mesh. But I think we might do that uh, for the holidays. So as you can see, it's starting to get cloudy. So I know that that is setting up. If I let this go any earlier, my head has a possibility of popping off when I'm going to put the rest of the pieces together. So if you can just, you know, be patient until that glue sets up to where it's no longer tacky. I'm just about there. And I am set. So you can see I'm just going through and trimming those little outside pieces that have a tendency because we are playing with it, it's going to fray. So now from here, we are going to add her bib. So what the bib does, those three pieces of four inch ribbon is going to hide this mechanics and her waist. So you can see that when we go to place this on top, can't see how we put that all together. So it also means that we have to add a dab of glue up here at the top, right underneath her head. And now we are going to place this right on the top. So I'm gonna hold her head because that hot glue added on top of the dry glue could cause that to react. But now that we've moved it to low, it should dry a whole lot quicker. 
So we're tucking this right up right underneath her chin. And then we'll be ready to assemble the rest of the pieces. So I'm really pushing down on this because I really want the bib to stay intact. Okay, now we are going to place our bow. I want to make sure that my tails are even and this one's slightly off. So I'm going to even this one up. So that we have the exact same lengths on our ribbon. And this is going to now hide, remember that wire that we used to hold the, um, the ribbon together? We're going to add our glue right over this area. And we're going to tuck this right over that area. I'm trying to hold my ribbon flat until it dries. So everything that we're layering on hides the mechanics of how it is built. And that is how the angels actually created and assembled. Okay. Now from here, we're going to add our bell. So we're going to place a dot right on top. And I'm going to hold the bell. So the bell glues in place. You could put a star here. You could put a little flag um, on top. You could put um, just a, a little like a scatter and filler if you wanted to. The thing that I notice is as I'm holding my bell on, I can feel the heat from the glue coming up into the metal on that bell. So just be careful. But as you can see so far, our angel looks really, really good. So now it's time to put her halo on. So the halo is meant to float above her head, not sit on top of her head. So it's not going to sit like this. It's going to float over the top so that when a customer's looking at it, they're like, Ooh, that looks really cool how they do that. So this is where, remember on the back, we had that little concave piece and we know that the end of our halo ends right about here. So I am going to trying to mentally tell myself where this starts. We're going to start the glue on the back of her head right here. And we're just going to lay a line of glue all the way down. And now we're going to glue her halo on. So this is where you want to hold the head part and you also want to hold the bottom on. Oops. And not stick your finger in the glue. So you really want to hold the head on so that we're getting that to really adhere to that. Halo. And this is the final, final step. So once you've gotten this far, you've successfully made your angel. So just give that time to set up. When you flip it over, now you have your halo that floats. And for picture sake, you want to make sure that all of your wings are open so that you can see all of them. I like them to come down to actually meet my skirt. And that, my dears, is how you create your Americana angel. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the door so that you can see this yields, I wanna say it's 18, this is almost 19 inches if I stretch it. If I don't stretch, it's 17 inches wide or sorry 18 inches wide and then if we go from the top to the bottom 
we're roughly right at 17 and a half. Basically, it's 18 inches by 18 inches. The great thing about these is they can fit in a storm door. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot you up. There we go. So you can see this on a full size door and see what this looks like. So I'm just going to take this and lay that down. Now, because I have a screw that protrudes out of my door, it's going to be a little challenging to put it on for pictures. However, remember on the back, we have our hanger. Again, you can twist it together for a loop hanger to hang on the wall. Um, if you leave it flat like this, this is how you will twist it around the top of your tree. And um, let's see what this looks like. So I'm just kind of tucking this under the wing for my pictures. So it might just kind of like, it wants to wobble to the opposite side. Sometimes you just have to try either side and try to get it to stay in place for photos. Because I don't like to bend the, um, the hook. I think I might have gotten it. Sometimes I can just like get it going just lightly long enough so that you can see it on a front door, but that is full size door. And this is what it looks like on that door. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that. What questions do you have on this angel? Again, you can make them any colors. You can make them for any holiday. Um, these are really popular right now during the patriotic season because it's a much, much lower price point. These are also amazing to take to your craft fairs because you can make them in a multitude of different colors. Um, you know, you can do pink and white for a baby shower. You can do blue and white, again, baby shower. Um, so many different um, ways to use those. Thank you, Loretta and Paula. You guys both said beautiful. Laura said, thank you for showing us this. You are more than welcome. So <clears throat> that's all I have for you for today. I thank you for joining me and I hope that you have an amazing weekend. And I can't wait to show you what I've got in store for next week. So I hope you'll come back. Don't forget, I'm here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. That's on the West Coast side. So that would be 6 p.m. Central or 7 p.m. Eastern. And on Thursday, we go live at 11 a.m. Pacific, which is 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. So I hope you guys will come back and see what we create then. Have an amazing weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.